Hello, and thanks for joining Cam Logic's Tech Tuesday. Uh, today, we are going to cover Solid Edge. Uh, we're going to go over some information around materials. A little bit about myself before we get started. Hi, my name is Rory Fox. Uh, I'm new here to Cam Logic. Uh, I run the first line support. So, if you call our support line, if you send an email to us, uh, you're likely going to talk to me uh, first. Uh, I have four plus years in technical support roles, and I'm here to help you. So let's actually jump into information about solid edge materials. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we're going to go over a little bit of information on the material table. Uh, we're going to actually create some materials, material libraries, and we're going to look at how materials uh, interact in the drafting environment. So material libraries. Solid Edge actually has support for multiple libraries at one time. All the libraries that you have are housed within a folder, and all the libraries that are saved in that folder are going to show up in Solid Edge and will be available for you to use. Now, something that's really neat uh, within Solid Edge um, is that you can import and export those libraries. So what this will allow is you can actually export your material library and you can open up that exported library into Excel, and that will allow you to mass edit materials. Uh, it also allows you to merge old libraries into Solid Edge. So let's say you have an old library from um, an older version, or uh, someone just has a library of materials that you want to use. You can actually take those materials. You can import that library directly into Solid Edge, or Another thing you can do is you can actually go into Excel. You can uh, copy all of those materials from the old library and paste them into the new library's Excel sheet and import it back in. So the Solid Edge material table. So again, there's a couple ways to create materials. You can do so directly within Solid Edge, but you can also do that within Excel. So when you export that library, uh, you can not only edit those materials, but you're able to create new materials within Excel and import it back in. And then from within Solid Edge, you'll be saving your materials to a library, which will then show up in that Excel spreadsheet. Custom properties. So you can create custom material properties while you're in the material table. Those things could be mass, density, text. Uh, there's a lot of different variables that you can use within the properties uh, for the material that will show up um, later on when we get into the drafting portion. Uh, you can also assign multiple materials, uh, a property that you're creating, at the same time. So this will save you some time. But you can also do that from within that Excel spreadsheet as well. Categorizing. So within the library, you can group and categorize uh, quite easily from within Solid Edge. But again, that Excel spreadsheet is really handy, and we're going to look at that Excel spreadsheet here in just a minute. Uh, but that Excel spreadsheet is uh, really handy for doing mass edits of a lot of materials at the same time. And then another really cool thing that you can do uh, to save yourself a little bit of time is you can actually force a material prompt when you create new materials, uh, new models, excuse me. Uh, this ensures that a material has been selected. And it's great uh, when you're doing sheet metal because you can set the gauge immediately uh, for that. Now let's actually jump over to Solid Edge real quick and take a look at some of these things. All right, so. Within Solid Edge, um, I am going to go up to the Application button, click here, and go down to the Solid Edge Options. So what I'm going to do within the Solid Edge Options is I'm going to ensure that we have that Force Prompt selected. So what you'll see here, Solid Edge Options.
All right, so within the solid adoptions on this part, uh, in the general tab here, the far right, right here, this prompt for material in new model documents. Uh, if this is unchecked, your, your new part will uh, just open up and allow you to go with editing. But if we say prompt for material uh, in the new model documents and apply, that's going to cause the material table to pop up whenever we create a new part. So again, that goes back to that uh, great for setting sheet metal gauge uh, and ensuring that you have a material selected if you need to have that. So let's actually jump into the material table. If we click back on the application button, go down to properties and material table. We'll click here. And this is our solid edge material table. Over here on the left, we see all of our different libraries listed out. Um, library 1, materials, uh, so on. And we can actually uh, click the plus to see within that library uh, what materials we have. So we have our categorization that we talked about here. Uh, we have a metals folder, which then has steel, iron, zinc. Uh, and then we have a non-metals folder, plastics, uh, woods, those sorts of things. And so this allows you to categorize your different materials however you'd like. And you can move them around within the actual uh, solid edge interface here. Um, I can right click and I can hit cut. And then I could say move this down uh, and paste it here. Um, it's going to refresh the library. And now that material is now within the iron. Um, this allows you to move, you know, a couple materials at a time between the different categories, but we can also do this within the Excel spreadsheet. Now, importing and exporting libraries. If we go to the name of the library that we have and we right click, uh, we can click Save As. And what this is going to allow us to do is actually export this library uh, into Excel. So from the Save As window that pops up, we can come to the Save As type, select Excel Workbook. Uh, we can rename this if we'd like, but generally we can save it as just the, the name it gives, which is the Material Library name. Uh, and then we'll click Save. What will happen there is Excel will open up the saved version of that spreadsheet with all of your materials listed here on the left. Uh, the category that that material is in, face style, all your different uh, properties that you have uh, set up within the materials uh, are going to be listed here. And this is where there's kind of a lot of power when it comes to uh, moving things around or, or changing, recategorizing, renaming, uh, and even creating new materials. So from within this spreadsheet, let's say um, I, I notice here I have a couple steel items uh, that are listed as iron. So what I can do is I can come over here to this metal steel category, copy that, and I can come down to this steel items that should be categorized steel, and then I can just paste those right over the category. Same thing if I was creating a new material, I could come in, uh, you know, make a new material name, uh, give it a category, and go on and, and create all these different properties right here within my Excel spreadsheet. What I would do then is save this spreadsheet, go back into Solid Edge here, uh, right click and import, and this will allow me to select where I uh, want to pull that library from. Now again, we had it as an Excel file, so you'll notice nothing is showing up here in the window, but that's because we have material library files selected uh, and not the worksheets. So we'll choose worksheets. Uh, we can see the materials here, and we'll open up that. Now, that's a good thing to note. Importing new materials is going to overwrite the materials that are in that library. Now, if you are just editing and adding new information, yes, it's going to overwrite that information, uh, but that's why it's saving that to the library. So if you'd like to you know, make sure that you have all those changes uh, correct within that Excel spreadsheet before you import, uh, just because you are going to uh, overwrite anything that's there. So we'll click OK. It'll 
just take a moment here to update those materials and it'll refresh the library. And now if I open up and I look within steel, uh, those steel items that I moved over are now back within the steel category. And if I look here under the glass fibers, that new glass material I created is listed here within my uh, glass fibers folder. Now again, these are things you can do both within that Excel spreadsheet or within Solid Edge, uh, creating those new materials and moving them around, renaming them. Um, here I'm going to come up to my steel. I'm going to uh, see that I have all these that were in that spreadsheet. But let's say I, I didn't want to make one in the spreadsheet. I just need to make a quick material within Solid Edge. I can right click uh, and I can click new material. What this will allow me to do is come in here and choose my options for making a new uh, a new material. So I can then select any of the properties that I want to change, click on that, change those digits, and so on and so forth, all through the different properties for this material. Now, something we can do custom is those custom properties we talked about. And I, right here on the right side toolbar, uh, there's this add custom property. And if we click on that, it allows us to name the property, the unit type, which could be any of these. I mean, there's uh, a lot of different options to choose from depending on your material that you're creating. But at the bottom here, we also have this text option. And I can add this to the properties within my material. Now, you'll notice I created this material, and it just has the name of material one. Um, what we'll do is we'll save this material and make sure that that's saved into that library, into that Excel spreadsheet. Um, and we can click off. Now, I left it as material one is the name. If we need to rename it, not a problem. Just right click, rename. And I can give that a name. Another cool thing within the material table is uh, our favorites. So what you'll notice here is uh, if I click over to favorites, uh, it's going to have some, some items listed here, some different materials. Uh, but we can also change our favorites. So if there's something we use a lot, uh, let's say, and, and you don't remember exactly where it's at within the list, you know, if I open up this uh, metals, there's a lot of different options here. Uh, and if you start adding a lot of custom materials, you can really get a large library built up. So you might not remember exactly where something is. Uh, so if it's something that you use a lot uh, within your materials, you can add it as a favorite here. Uh, under your favorite materials list. And we can do that actually by uh, coming over to the left side, choosing the material, right clicking and saying add to favorites. And that'll add that down uh, at the bottom of your favorites list. And you can always move that up in the list, uh, get that all the way to the top if you'd like, if that's something you use a lot of. All right, now I'm going to jump back in over here. So we looked at uh, all the different ways we can use that Excel spreadsheet um, and save our different uh, custom properties. We can categorize them. We can create some new materials within that Excel spreadsheet or even within Solid Edge itself. Uh, but now we, let's look at some materials in drafts. So within the draft environment, when we create a parts list, uh, Doing so will actually allow us to add materials to the, the parts list. Um, another cool thing you can do is add all of your material properties, mass, density, uh, etc. You can add all of these things uh, back to that parts list to show up for you. Jumping back over to Solid Edge.
opening up a draft here that I have, which is a really cool wheel design. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a parts list of our wheel. I'll zoom in here. Uh, as you can see, we have our item number, our file name, um, all your standard parts uh, of your parts list listed out here. What we're going to do is we're going to hover over, right click, and go to properties. Um, now what we'll do is we'll make sure that we head to our columns tab here. Uh, you can see the different columns that we have. But this is where we can come in. We can scroll down uh, on these properties here, and we can find material. Uh, and we're going to add that column. And we can also come in and we can add any of the other properties from that uh, material. So we can come in, we can say um, mass. Density. And so on. You can do that for all your different uh, properties within that item. Uh, we'll hit apply and okay. And as you can see here, uh, we have all these new columns added here with our material, uh, the mass uh, and the density. Any other properties that you would have added are going to show up. All right, so uh, I'm now going to open it up if you guys have any questions on any of the material that we covered. Uh, anything on materials, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, you can do so now. Um, if you have any other questions that may pop up later, uh, you can email me. Again, my name is Rory. Uh, it's roryf at camlogic.com. So go ahead. If you have any questions, you can uh, ask them now. All right, so uh, again, if you're in need of additional support, I am uh, the first line of support here within Cam Logic. Uh, you can give me a call anytime, 855-955-0900. Uh, I'm here between 8 and 5, Monday through Friday for you. Uh, you can also email support at camlogic.com. That will come my way as well. Next up, uh, we have another Tech Tuesday. Uh, again, thanks for attending this one. Uh, the next Tech Tuesday is going to be June 21st. Uh, we're going to cover CamWorks, and Dave DeBoer is going to be your presenter. You can always go to our website uh, to find out more information on any events we have, uh, anything going on within the CamLogic world and uh, you. And also, uh, this video is going to be posted to our YouTube channel. So if you missed anything or uh, want to replay it, you can go check it out there. Uh, thanks again for joining, and uh, again, head over to our website, camlogic.com, if you have any uh, information you needed for events.